This video covers the concept of gradients and intercepts of linear lines, an important concept in IB Maths AI found in Topic 2 Functions under the subtopic of linear equations and graphs. So here we have a couple of diagrams on the left hand side. Uh, I think these are pretty um, easy concepts to grasp. Where it gets a little bit difficult is if maybe the gradient is a little bit of a hard one to calculate or potentially the intercepts aren't listed. But before we get into that, let's just recap the real basics. Let's start with intercepts on the bottom left here. The x-intercept is simply where the straight line cuts through the horizontal axis. So this, this red dot here. Likewise, the y-intercept is where the line cuts through the vertical axis, and the vertical axis is the y-axis, the horizontal axis is the x-axis. So they are the intercepts. For a straight line, there'll only ever be two, one x-intercept and one y-intercept. Uh, for other types of lines like parabolas um, or other polynomials, potentially you'll have multiple intercepts, but for straight lines, you'll only ever have one x and one y. Now the gradient is the slope of the line. And if you're not sort of sure what that means, I like to think of it as like a hill. And if I'm skateboarding down a hill, let's say here's the top of the hill and here I am. The slope is, well, how steep is the hill? Is it a, is it a fairly flat hill that I'm gonna go down slowly or is it a very steep hill that I'm gonna rapidly accelerate down the hill? So that is the slope of a hill. Likewise, the gradient, which we uh, give the letter M, is just the slope of the line. And the way that we find the gradient of a line is using this simple formula here, rise over run, or a little bit more sophisticated, it's essentially the same thing, but this is a more sophistic, sophisticated way of, of calculating it. And, and I'm going to show examples of this over on the right hand side. Okay, so let's go through two examples here. Identify the X and Y intercepts and gradients of the two lines below. Let's start with number one. Well, I can see here that the x-intercept passes through four. So I know that my x-intercept, which I'll call x-intercept is four. I know that my y-intercept passes through this point here, which is two. So y-intercept, uh, sorry, is equal to two. I now need to find my gradients. Now this could be completed fairly easily using rise over run, but I'm actually gonna use this form here just to demonstrate how it works. I need to identify the coordinates of two points that I know on this line and I already have identified those two. So this coordinate here is zero comma two and this coordinate here is four comma zero. I now, I now label one of the coordinates as coordinate one and one of them as coordinate two. So this one here, I'm gonna call x1, y1, so that's my coordinate one, and this one here is x2, y2. Now it doesn't actually matter which one you call coordinate one or two. Uh, if I reverse them here, I'd get the same answer. I would just have uh, probably more negatives in my equation, but it'd end up getting the same result anyway. So let's go ahead and use this gradient formula. I won't write it out, but I'm just looking at this green formula here. So it's y2 subtract y1. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to get negatives, so that's okay. So y2 is zero subtract two divided by x2 subtract x1. Now x2 is four subtract zero. So that is equal to, I'll go across the page just for room. It's gonna be negative two over four, and that is equal to negative a half. So my gradient here of this blue line is negative and a half. And that actually brings in an important concept that if the, if the line is sloping downwards, so from high left to low right, it'll be a negative gradient. Example two though shows the opposite, which is low left to high right, it's sloping upwards, that'll be a positive gradient, a positive number. Okay, let's now go through example two. I don't actually know the x-intercept yet, so I'll leave that blank. I do know that my y-intercept is one, so my y-intercept is one. Let's now go ahead and calculate the gradient. I need two points. I know that this point here is zero comma one, and I also know that it passes through this point here, which has a coordinate of one comma three. I'm gonna label them as x1, y1, x2, y2. So my gradient will equal y2 subtract y1, so three subtract one over x2 subtract x1, so one subtract zero. That'll be two on one, which has a gradient of two. 
So, so far in example two, I have found the y-intercept and I have found the gradient, but I don't yet know the x-intercept. I can't just assume that it's negative a half. I don't know, I don't know that for sure. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit of algebra plus the, um, the slope-intercept form of a straight line to actually go ahead and find that x-intercept. So I know that my equation of this line is going to be y equals 2x plus one. Now, if you're not sure how I got this, go and watch the forms of linear lines videos and focus on the slope intercept form of a straight line. I'm now going to substitute in, so sub in a value of y equals zero because at the x intercept, the equivalent y value is zero. So sub in y equals zero. So zero equals two x plus one. Let's now subtract both sides by one. I get negative one equals two x. Let's now divide both sides by two. Let's take this over here. X is equal to negative one on two. So our x intercept is actually negative one on two. We did prove that it was negative a half. Okay, now we went down a little bit of a rabbit hole of algebra there. So just, so just to step back up to the high level picture, um, for a straight line, we will have one x intercept one y-intercept and we can find the slope of that line by using either rise over run or this form here. Okay, that concludes our videos of gradients and intercepts of linear lines.